Three, two, one. That's the biggest night of my career. All these people have come from all over the world tonight just to be here. Don't just dump them. Float them in the wind. It should be magical. It only happens once a year. New Year's Eve. Okay. It's a time when hopeless can be romantic. Last year, I met a woman, and she was extraordinary. You're gonna meet her, aren't you? And a resolution can become a revelation. Happy New Year! Well, y'all ain't too happy right now. No, no, no. You know what? Yeah, yeah, no. Kiss my ass. How about that? I wish I had those 2012 glasses so I could throw them at you, Corey. <laughs> throw yeah. them at me? Well, yeah, I didn't make this movie. Why are you getting mad at me? Screaming about Happy New Year and all that. A movie like this is a type of movie that, even when I looked at the trailers, it just made me go, oh, fuck. I, I, I was not... I was not looking forward to this movie only because a movie like this makes you hate the whole idea of New Year's. Of what I know, it right? <laughs> you know, just because it's like, oh, oh, you're going to show me with your vision what New Year's means to you. And then it's not, and it's not going to be one vision. It's going to be like 20 fucking different. So wait a minute. Y'all going to be at home? different people's yeah, versions of what New Year's means to them. 20? That's a conservative estimate. Yeah, yeah more like 40 people. <laughs> I don't know. This was like they put a bunch of celebrities in a scatter gun and just fired it at the screen. <laughs> no, this, no, it was like is, watching yeah. the Grammys, right? Because it was like there was tons of celebrities doing nothing, and, but smiling vacuously at the camera and really crappy music. No, this is this is a this is the clown car equivalent of celebrities. Yeah, I mean they just much. they just keep coming and coming and coming. It's like cuz it really was like that cuz right when you thought like they had enough, like somebody else would show up. You were like Damn, stop already. Cause they, you, ain't, you ain't got that much to do here. The only person I could identify with at all is Robert De Niro because I was hoping I would die before the movie was over. <laughs> it's funny. like my, my, They go through all those, those B-list celebrities that you hate from every rom-com because that's all they ever show up in. Mm -hmm. And they get to De Niro. You're like... Oh, come on. And that's the part but, I was but, really pissed off about. I'm like, But he's what? dying the whole time. Wait, it's, wait, like, wait. it's almost like he's like, oh, if I got to do this, I need an exit strategy. But if you remember <laughs> from that shitty trailer, you saw nothing but shots of him like standing tall, like telling somebody like I thought he was like the spirit of New Year's or something in the goddamn trailer and in this he's like dying and I'm like what, when did this happen look he was like I am not motherfucking gonna work with Zac Efron or Katherine mm -hmm. Heigl you're gonna put me on the screen with women who have won Oscars yeah but uh, <laughs> I honest, guess that's honestly, true it's true yeah but honestly this really is uh, one of those movies where you see the baby cast, uh, uh, as far as the, the celebrities, the up-and-coming celebrities, and the ones who are going to end up in a nursing home in the next couple of years. <laughs> because it was kind of sad seeing like some of these celebrities and go, oh, man, they're really aging bad. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, you know what? You, you mean were, Michelle Pfeiffer in you, Oh, yeah. You know, you were right about that. They, <laughs> they shot a different version of the trailer that is not in the movie for Robert De Niro because they mm -hmm. knew they – well, you know, when you see Robert De Niro, you want to see Robert De Niro, like – being Robert De Niro, yeah. so they shot a trailer with like, "Hey, happy fucking New Year!" Hey. <laughs> and, then, and then you see him in the movies like, hey. yeah. <laughs> through, through the whole thing. I was like, really the same yeah. way. like, "Wait yeah. a minute, why?" Well, I didn't know I was yeah. getting this Robert De Niro Talk, in the movie. Yeah, Talk exactly. about sleepwalking your way through a role. He literally <laughs> yeah. didn't get out of bed. I, and all I was thinking is like, please, please, God. Like no, knowing from that trailer, I was like, please, at the end of this movie. Don't fucking turn into Return of the Jedi where I get the spirit of Robert De Niro hanging out, telling somebody what New Year's means to him. At, you know, and, and he's going to be standing there right, ne right next to fucking Dick Clark and Ed McMahon. You know, they're like no, fucking they, Jedi spirits. But that's what they do in the, in the, in the trailer. Okay, so in the, in, the, in the movie, he never walks. No. I mean, he's in bed. Somebody comes to, t to carry him around a wheelchair. That fool might as well not even have legs in this movie because he doesn't walk. But in the, like, in the trailer scene, he gives a speech. He's like, you yep. see that fucking ball over there? <laughs> it better fucking drop at midnight or somebody's going to fucking get wet tonight. You know? like, I love fucking New York. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what the fuck, man? You know? That's the thing with this, this kind of movie. This is similar. This is Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall's done a lot of movies. He's directed a lot of movies, over 20 films. Uh, some of his most memorable movies. Some good, some bad, some very popular that I disagree with. Uh, like What's the good ones? Well, Pretty Woman, a popular film that I even saw like a year and a half ago on TV. And I'm just like, I don't get the popularity behind that movie, man. I get it. I get why why women, you know, adopt the fantasy or, or fall for it. Because you guys aren't hookers. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, why yeah, I was upset. Yeah, you know, because yeah, like, the, the idea, the idealized hooker, like, like you could actually get a hooker that looked anything like Julia Roberts on Hollywood Boulevard at midnight. And you can only hook once, and it will be the perfect man. Yeah, yeah perfect man. Yeah. A, a, a millionaire that. who doesn't care that you're a hooker and wants to marry you, right? It changed his life to marry you. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear what's, what makes that movie popular. 
Yeah. <laughs> and believe me, I've tried. I've, I've got some mm. ugly hoes waking <laughs> wake, wake up the next morning for them to not only be in love with me, but for them to be pretty. You know what mm-hmm. it's just, I like, it, yeah. it, maybe I don't have enough money, but yeah. That was a total yeah. Disney-ized version yeah. of Hooker World. Well, <laughs> you know? That might as well have been an yeah. animated movie yeah. about hookers that Disney yes, made. Yes, you starring know? Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it might as well have been Disney's hoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> so you're turning into me. Don't you, don't you dare close your legs. <laughs> uh, but Gary Marshall, I think, is like, you could say remarkably he makes movies for women largely. For like, women and, and tolerant boyfriends. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is just like the, his newest thing, which is like, fuck it. I'm not even going to just tell one story. I'm going to tell a bunch of short stories that are really mediocre, but there'll be so many goddamn celebrities in them, and it changes sequences so fast that you forget to be bored. And that's like what he's doing, one after another of them. This is the latest named after a holiday. I bet you anything there's a boardroom somewhere where they're going, why can't we do Groundhog's Day? There, are, there was already a movie. Well, fuck them. My movie. <laughs> will be the new Groundhog's Day. Well, the thing with Gary Marshall is that he has, I mean, the guy is able to get a large cast of people. I mean, he this, this is a man who's worked on, like, TV as well as movies. I mean, happy Days. Yeah, yeah Happy Laverne Days, Shirley, Laverne and Shirley, Mark and, Mark and Mindy. Yeah, all those sitcoms that you love so much from, from the from the seventies and eighties, like he's had a hand in those. So now today he's a legend and he can get a lot of people. He he's, say, he's, he's got files yeah, on a yeah, lot yeah, of people because he's, he's lived for fucking ever. <laughs> I, I know his his <laughs> casting process is a lot like Uwe Boll's. Where no, I mean in all seriousness, where they go, okay, it really doesn't matter who we get. They've just got to be people that people recognize. True. And they go, here's the time we're shooting at this location. See who's available and can do it for cheap. Well, no, I think it's no. I think it's because because everyone in this movie deserves some bit of their uh, why they're why they're acting to begin with. Thanks to this guy because this guy probably has his hands at every every goddamn TV show, every movie produced. I mean, this is this is like this guy's probably like the grand like the grandfather of Hollywood and we just uh, never we just I, never knew I it. wouldn't argue that. No, he's a Hollywood <laughs> legend and you know, he's one of those guys where to us it's like, oh, I don't like all this guy's movies. If you're involved in Hollywood, if if Gary Marshall was to call up and said let, yay, I need you on the set right now. What the fuck am I shooting? I don't care. Put your clothes on and get to the set and start filming. I was like, working. You, know, you know the fuck you talking to? You know? yeah, like, plus, you know, it goes back to Pretty Woman. It's like, hey, Gary Marshall wants you in his movie. Oh, yeah. What, what's he done? He did Pretty Woman. He caught lightning in a bottle. Oh, like, yeah. Okay, well, then sign me up because it could happen again. Yeah, yeah. And so it, now he's just kind of like, you know what? I might be dead tomorrow. Next time I make a movie, I better put everybody in fucking Hollywood in it. <laughs> make sure yeah. I just got everything covered. And that seems to be a theme that he's following. I mean, we were talking about it tonight. A lot of people who see the trailer for this, they're like, you're not the only one, Leon. They're like, is this a sequel to his last movie, Valentine's Day, which was a huge ensemble piece with all these intertwining stories uh, that somehow come together at the end? I mean, call it, you know, the... Pulp fiction of romance or something. Yeah, oh, don't well, do that. At, at this point, <laughs> call it just straight up formulaic and hacky. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, and it is because what it, in, we would. I, I guess what I was saying was is like, yeah, this can be a sequel, but a sequel in theme and spirit, not necessarily in story or characters. Because well, because not, Ashton Kutcher's back and he's not playing the same. He's not, not playing no, the same character, and you have uh, Jessica Biel who's, who's also not, back, not playing the same character, and not playing the same yeah. character. So either. in no way it is a sequel, is what you're saying. Well, like I said, it's only in theme in that he has followed the same formula and just kind of t- and also has taken another holiday that people have. Well, I, you know, I'll I just tell you about it. So, you know, much like his last film, Valentine's Day, you know, New Year's Eve revolves around intertwining stories where characters put heavy emphasis and expectations on the meaning of one special day. And, and, and on this day, this includes love lost, love regained search for new love dueling vaginas you know and and trying to just be there to celebrate new year's day in the way that people think it should be celebrated properly which is from a lot of people their dream to just be in Times square to watch that fucking ball drop you know that's it i don't know why but i don't get that either yeah Yeah. i you know for a lot of people that means something fucking like okay so it's bad enough you've got bon jovi but then you've got bon jovi he's not being bon jovi in this movie he is playing some other jensen completely type of different musician who doesn't sound anything like bon jovi and we're like really why did you even bother to get it because he didn't want to pay those other fucking guys in the band. Richie Sambora, you can go fuck off. Like, I need to check more than he does. Yeah. I mean, they, they're trying to convince us that Bon Jovi is uh, the hottest act in the world. Even like you see 12-year-old girls in the crowd who are going nuts and wetting their panties over him. And I'm like, 
I don't buy that. And then all the stuff he sings are old songs oh, from the 60s. Old covers. Yeah, old yeah. covers are like uh, – okay. Leon, 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 it doesn't matter if you buy it. The, the person who's who's the oldest in the room, which is Gary Marshall, who's older than you, he buys it, <laughs> yeah. all right? So he's going to convince I, you I, to I like buy this it. kid. He's hip. I, that that Bond juvenile kid, he's, he's got moxie, I tell you. <laughs> Give me a C. A bouncy C. A bouncy C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, man, it's I, – I will say this about the film because I saw – Valentine's Day and and did not like it. And the reason why I did not like it is because the, what annoyed me about it, they have so many people in that movie that you forget about certain stories that are happening. I mean, it goes on. The, I think the movie's even over two hours long. And so they'll go on along some story and they'll come back and you'll be like, wow, I I forgot that uh, Ta- uh, Taylor Lautner was in here. I forgot that Paige, uh, uh, Taylor Swift was in here. I didn't, don't you say that about Taylor Na- Lautner in every movie? But you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> even abduction that he started. I mean, well, <laughs> shit, even when he's on the screen, he's like, <laughs> who's that fucking <laughs> la- llama face whining kid right there? Who, who's that boy? But you know, but it, in, in, I would say in this movie, you know, whether you like the stories or not, he was able to like keep them balanced a little better than he was in Valentine's Day. They weren't as schizophrenic as the stories yeah, in Valentine's yeah. Day, which were so all over the place and a lot of them a lot of them were given such short shrift that you were like why is this story even in here at all except to go look at those famous people and i i think that like time wise he balanced him out a lot more i just don't think that any of them had any greater impact really than any of the stories in valentine's day there was nothing in here that made me go okay i get it i get the emotional connection i didn't feel even for robert de niro robert de niro dying should leave me a little verklempt Nothing. Just because you couldn't buy it because uh, <laughs> the thing is that with with all this, I've never saw Valentine's Day and there's a reason because of that. Because with the fear I had walking in this movie is that there's going to be 20 fucking storylines going on that I don't care about. Because you know what? How in the hell are you going to flesh out all of these characters in such a small amount of time? Because I definitely don't want to be in the theater for two hours waiting to get the gist of what all these goddamn characters are about, what New Year's means to them. Because I'm like, all right, you know, make something interesting. Because one of the things you don't make interesting is when you notice Ashton Kutcher, he's bummed out about New Year's for whatever reason. He doesn't like it. There's no real explanation as to why. Right. Where all I'm thinking is like, this is fucking Ashton Kutcher, the guy who can fucking walk outside and get any fucking girl he wants at any goddamn time because he's Ashton Kutcher. I cannot buy that this guy is just going to find love in a goddamn elevator just because, oh, woe is me. And his story, there's nothing. There's absolutely no kind of like reason for it for his segment at all. You know yeah. what? None of these stories were, were interesting. They're all very mediocre. But you're right. His was the least interesting because he's he's playing what a hipster comic book artist. And I'm like, dude, look at you. Give me a fucking break. You know, like it, it, Jason Segel. Sure, he should have played that role. Yeah. But yeah. Ashton Kutcher is not pulling it off. He's a terrible actor. And then Leah Michelle. Okay, maybe she works for Glee, where you got to just get up there and you know be a Glee club and 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 drama and all. But even her, I was like, wow, you're kind of terrible. Maybe you should just sing. Just and, you know, they hire oh, you to and sing, they do, yeah. and they do. <laughs> <laughs> and the oldest cliche in the book too, like the two pe- strangers trapped into an elevator with each other. They're either going to end up one of them's either going to be Satan or they're going to make out at some right. point. Yeah, one see, of that's two a, things can happen. That's the thing that y'all have touched on. Like each one of these stories. I mean, there's several of them. I mean, too many to go through. Is like Jessica Biel and her husband, who was uh, who Seth was, Myers Seth from Saturday yeah, Live. Yeah, they play a, uh, a couple who was about to have a baby on New Year's Eve, and if they beat another couple that's about to have a baby, then they will win a cash prize of twenty five thousand dollars. You know, there's the love in the elevator with Ashton Kutcher and that chick from Leah Michelle. Sunday. Yeah, you have the the mom who wants to like sacrifice New Year's Day just to be with her daughter, played by uh, 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 Abigail Breslin. Ab- Abigail Breslin is the daughter. Yeah. And, oh, and Sarah, uh, uh, and Sarah uh, Jessica Sarah Jessica Parker, Parker is. Like, you yeah, should so heard me sinking into my seat. Next to Leon with every new person. Well, every time they introduce somebody, I was like, "Wow, they went down Cyrus's hit list." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. they did. And I have, was like, yeah. "Dane Cook is going to be in this, isn't he?" <laughs> no, you, you got Robin and Nero, who's dying on can- of cancer, who wants to like see the ball drop one last time. But as dementia sets in before his death, he starts to re- have regrets on his life of people of somebody that he's walked out on. They never say who. You have the girl. Although who, he had Halle Berry taking care of him, and, he had, and you, know, yeah. you know how De Niro is into black chicks, so that had to be good. Oh for yeah, him. I'm sure he was trying. I'm, I'm sure he was faking that whole cancer thing. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to get just. One last hand, you know. You know, for. baby, I, I, I ain't gonna have cancer all yeah. the time. And, and, and what's her name? Uh, two-time Oscar winner. 
Uh, Hillary, Hillary Swank. Swank. Hillary Swank. She's oh. responsible for the ball drop, and if she can't get it working, then the mayor's gonna come in and have her assassinated or something. Uh, you know, I mean, these stories go. Oh, they, oh, don't, don't, don't forget Zac Efron. Oh, Zac Efron yeah. as uh, as a plucky as a, young as delivery a, guy, a, yeah, a bike, bike carrier, carrier who <laughs> has to take out Michelle Pfeiffer, who is uh, like an embittered older woman who was well, the pre pre Catwoman Selena Kyle. Yeah, she's her, her character Returns. from from Batman Returns. Oh, that is true. Yeah. I, forgot about that. I, kept, I kept waiting for Zac yeah. Efron to. Push her out of a goddamn oh, window. You mean so John Lithgow. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so 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 she can get hot. Yeah, John Lithgow is her boss, who's just not giving her, you know, any kind of respect, especially on this New Year's Eve, where she has decided, like, if I can't get the respect, I'm going to go out and I'm going to make sort of like a New Year's Eve bucket list of things that I want to do because I feel bold enough to do it tonight. And she gets Zach Efron to help her out. These stories all they I mean they go on. Who's a Who's the other guy, tall, handsome guy? You know? uh, uh, Josh Dumel. Josh Dumel, who's like, he wants to meet that girl that he met last New Year's Eve, who he has a, rendez a rendezvous with her this New Year's Eve, if she shows up and he's scared about that. But all these stories, I mean, they, they go on and on. There's even more on top of this. But, and this is my problem with Gary Marshall, most of his films, is that a lot of them, and this is coming from a guy who has a big TV background in decades long ago. They still seem to have an effect on his filmmaking. It's for some people that work that works, but for me, like for this, it's not that I didn't understand these characters. I knew exactly where they're coming from. The shallowness comes in that well, for one, there's too many characters, and you're right, you don't have time to develop them. But this is this is sitcom writing. What people are watching here is not even a TV movie. They're watching a TV show with movie production and you're watching a lot of episodes of one TV show put together into one film. And that might work for 30 minutes on TV, but for a two-hour movie where you're trying to make all those lame sitcom plots work, where, yeah, on TV it does, but not theatrically it doesn't. Yeah. It, it worked 20 years ago, and not now, which... Yeah, I at mean, least not for me. It, it, yeah, it doesn't yeah, work for wa us. Watching it, I, I really felt like, man, I do feel like I'm watching my grandfather's version of a romantic comedy or some ensemble piece that I just don't care for I no, mean, your grandfather he's bringing version. out all his old friends you know to make cameos and i'm like these people belong in a nursing home they don't belong in film all right your grandfather's version of romantic comedy was good it was like the philadelphia story and stuff like this this is these kids today with short attention span who don't want to think about anything who are like i don't really want to feel anything except for like the most surface of emotions here because that's all this movie has to offer the, you're right the writing is absolutely terrible none of the jokes are funny but some of the performers bring a little light to it and i would say larry miller in particular sure. who has a cameo as a tow truck driver all too brief almost every line he has is really funny oh yeah he's um, funny besides didn't i tell you that all the rental places close at three i've got you covered there's your ride right there hey edwin hey harley hey sam hey he's the, the pastor yeah that's right see your muffs <laughs> so my cousin here tells me you need a lift. Cousin? Yeah, I'm taking my wife and kids in to see the Radio City Rockettes. We do it every New Year's Day. Ever seen the Rockettes? Be happy to give you a lift. You want to pitch in for gas? Hell yeah, I'll pay for all the gas. Thank Don't you. say hell to him. He's a pastor. Show him the book. Give me my pen back. I never understand people with hair. What's her name from uh, the modern Sophia, uh, oh, Sophia, Sophia Vergara. Vergara. Yeah, that's her. Who's she, playing the same character. Yeah, she's yeah. Like, exactly. She's but, playing the same yeah. character. But she's yeah. cute and she's funny. And she's, she's hot. Hey, certainly she's, nice to look at. She's comedy with tits. You I know mean, what? Yeah. She really, I have to say, she she annoyed the shit out of me in this movie. Did she? Yeah, when she came on, because she comes on with that thick accent. And she's like, oh, because she's, the, most of the movies she spends flirting over Bon Jovi. She's like, hey, I can, I, can, I can help you. Hey, can I give you, can I distract you? I can make you feel good. I can make you sad. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can't take this shit no Well, you more. know what? You you brought up something that that bothered me. And it's like as like I don't want to come into this and and see race cuz people are people. But goddamn there's too many same looking white people in this movie. And and, 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 and and then when you get somebody who's different, uh, you know, Sofia Vergara or the Indian guy or the male nurse mm -hmm. or Hector Elizondo. Yeah, Hector yeah. Elizondo who I like Russia, this movie. or the, or the, the, the gay male nurse. Mm -hmm. They they pump it up so much. That they're just cartoons. It's like, wow, everybody else gets to play it straight. But you guys, you got to talk like this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh honey, let me get that, that thermometer for you. Let and me so show you my tits while I'm in my beautiful culinary school dress. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. really? It's yeah. like you're wearing culinary dress and your tits are popping out. I get it. Okay, I get it. That's your, but she, like, she, was, she was hired to play the same No, I understand that. But, but the idea yeah. is like, okay, all you vanilla New Yorkers get to live out your fantasy and, and have your fun. But everybody else is just a cartoon prop for you. No, that's very true. <laughs> yeah, very and, true. That, and and I have to say that's why that's why I absolutely loved 
Officer Ludacris. <laughs> who came oh in. my god! <laughs> that brother came in and they act like they just woke him up. Literally, when I said you got that call out of bed from Gary Marshall to be there, it's almost like Gary Marshall called up Ludacris and said, "Hey, I need a rapper in this movie. You know, you're popular with the kids. Get up and come to my set." He, and, when he woke up and he got to the set. He's like, "All right, well, my boy." Yeah. And and you know, some, somebody should have fucking woken up his Taylor because once again, I'm getting sick and tired of seeing that and that dude be in movies where his costumes do not his fucking clothes don't fit. fit. Oh, right. he, he fucking yeah. he's walking around looking like Beaker. I mean, his fucking clothes look like they're about to fall off. I know. Right? Starting from his neck on down. I thought he like, was going to start singing we, stuff from Stop Making Sense. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like you look at him, you're like, you ain't no New York cop. No, this is the I mean, second you, time you man. might be onto something because maybe he got called the last minute. Maybe that suit was made for somebody else. Made us, yeah. <laughs> and he just stepped in, or the, the, the person who who was supposed to be there, mm-hmm. you know, said, "Fuck, I ain't doing this." Like, yeah. like they hired Terrence Howard. He was like, "I read the script. Yeah. I ain't doing What's this." What's weird? Lucas just yeah. showed up and they ain't noticed. We know that yeah. Hillary Swank obviously is a talented actress, and in the scene she's not with them, she's at least trying. Oh yeah. But I couldn't help but notice every sequence, and she has quite a few with him where it's the two of them having a conversation it's so flat yes. on both their sides and i can't help but <laughs> oh, think yeah. that she was like if i actually try and act it's just gonna it's really gonna point worse. out that he can't <laughs> and the way that the way that suit fitted that brother man that suit must have been that role must have been for michael clark duncan at first <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the second time this, 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 yeah. this is the second time we have talked about this he oh, was yeah. in. Remember the calls we saw Max Payne? Oh hell yeah! And he played. He also played a New York cop. And except he was a detective. Mm-hmm. And every time that dude plays a, a New York cop, it looks like he. T- it looks like his daddy was a cop. <laughs> yeah. He, and he took his daddy clothes and decided to play policeman that day. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm like, God damn! I'm a cop just like daddy. Yeah. Look, you know? <laughs> look at my boy right there. He's so it, cute. It is really ridiculous. But and you I, know and what? I was shocked that nobody noticed that. And that dude would make the worst cop. Now I like Ludacris. Uh, his, I've seen him be good. Yeah. Things. What's his name? Chris, Chris Bridges. Chris Bridges. Yeah, you but know. but yeah, but yeah, it, was, it was one thing when they show his name like uh, Chris Ludacris Bridges, and I'm like, you know what? Don't drop the Ludacris. Like, <laughs> you, I know you want to be like Dwayne Johnson, but he actually acts no, in things. No, you, like, yeah. you, you hold hold on to that Ludacris. Yeah, you might need there. that. But you know what? What makes me laugh about that brother is that he's you know they like in this movie like he's he's a straight up like ranking cop you know he's mm-hmm. coming up he's almost coming in looking like general Patton. i'm like he got and shit. Yeah. It's like and commissioner gordon I, yeah. I thought he was gonna get up on the roof and set yeah. up the bat signal no, we, <laughs> well, we, got, we got some trouble new york we better call batman yeah. Yeah. what what'd you call who batman you need help with the ball, ball. But can you imagine, that guy would make the worst cop because when, whenever he was a beat cop can you imagine him just like he'd be the most he the most lifeless cop like that's something even a robber he'd be like you know hey, hey man so i won't shoot you be, yeah. don't don't make me shoot okay just, just go Oh, man. So watch he, out, he, he might he, have yeah. 10 guns in that suit. <laughs> He'd be too busy tripping over his pants. Yeah, because I'm, he fucking, I might trip over my yeah, daddy's pants. Keep on going. Or plus, okay. it'd be like, hey, that guy never read me my Miranda rights. <laughs> yeah, dude, I said yeah. you had a right. <laughs> yeah, dude, I said, baby, baby, baby. Did you read the subtitle? A, a, a conversation between Ludacris and 50 Cents. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you, 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 you know what, guys? Yeah, uh, keep, yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs to tell Ludacris, <laughs> Ludacris, keep the Ludacris in your name because it's the only thing that fits you, all right, dude? No, he's good. I've seen him be good, except that, you know, come on. I, I don't know who he has friends with in, in the NYPD that they say he can like play a cop, but I've seen him play a cop two times. I ain't buying it. I've seen him now. Nah, I've seen him play like you know a, a race car driver, or, you know, <laughs> a, a rapper, you know, or, you know, shit. At this point, I buy him. You know, as a doctor, as a fucking doctor, yeah, as a brain surgeon, well, right, maybe science. a vet. I mean, come on, let's be honest. <laughs> Anything except a cop at this point. Shit, I play. I buy him playing a fucking poodle before I would be <laughs> playing a cop. But you know, this movie, like I said, I, I see some improvements. I, I'm gonna be the one to get jumped on here. I'm not saying that I like this movie because it's not a good movie. It's not, and I hated the first hour of the movie. Uh, you know, first 45 minutes because there were besides the TV direction, besides scenes of just trying to get a cheap laugh from Muggin, which they actually kept going through the whole movie. Like, there's even one part where they show Sarah Jessica Parker is, like, uh, watching the Rockettes on stage. She's like, yeah, and she's just looking at him, and they just cut to this fat black gay guy just sitting in this chair like, yeah, I'm dancing, I'm dancing. <laughs> I was like, you know, who, who is that guy? <laughs> and why did they, well, we have to see it except for, like, Santa. a cheap laugh. <laughs> black he Santa. Black <laughs> Santa. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting in the sleigh. Look at, no, look at me, Mom. That. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. <laughs> I'm damn gay. I'm dancing. But uh, yeah, at, near the end of the movie, there were some parts. I mean, that. I was laughing at some of the characters that appeared throughout the movie. I mean, like more than were cameos, 
then I mean I'm not talking about like uh, this whole movie could almost be a cameo but people that just came on for just a few minutes I won't say who they were but there were a few spots here and there that I laughed and you know yeah as, as contrived as they are there was some parts that I thought were still kind of cute and you know they got to me I was I, I don't even want to say those parts so I don't want to ruin anything for anybody that likes it <laughs> you don't you know? embarrass yourself uh, yeah, <laughs> I, you know at this point from what I'm saying I already am you know but, <laughs> but yeah I'm not you know I, I, like I said it's, I saw Valentine's Day I don't think it's as bad as uh, as that movie like I said it's still not a good movie but I, I know that for certain people for certain people if they saw it on television if they saw it as a rental I don't th- this is not one of the worst movies that I've seen I've seen some bad movies and that's what I reserve bullshits for you know and fuck yous for for like movies that are terrible this is something that I'm just sitting there thinking like I just don't care I'm not mad I'm not angry I'm not hating this movie it, I'm just really 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 indifferent to it and there's some parts in that I actually just found cute near the end uh, we're talking about just like you know scraping like really the bottom of a rental for me Something that we didn't talk about, I mean, with all the cameos. One thing about this movie that kind of depressed me is that it showcases a lot of actresses who used to be hot. And you just go like, wow, I remember how many times I wrote one out to her. And now, <laughs> yeah, my just, Leon. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, dude, it's just, it's over. It's I'm over, glad Johnny. you say that. Now, who, who are you talking about, Tim? Almost all of them. A- Alyssa Milano. There was a time when Sarah Jessica Parker was hot. Michelle Pfeiffer. That w- All right, I'm glad oh, that you say that because yeah. you jumped on my ass one day when I talked about Michelle Pfeiffer. Almost everybody did. I brought up something where I said I saw Michelle Pfeiffer on T on a- in a picture. I was like, man, she's looking kind of. And everybody's like, man, that's a picture. Shut up. You know, she's still mm-hmm. all right now. Yeah. Oh, nah. yeah. I mean, I know, she's, I know she's dressed down, but even still, you're like, uh, I don't know what it would take to she clean up. She lost all nine of those lives, I guess. Yeah. I mean, and shit, man, between Sarah Jessica Parker and Hillary Swank, I. I thought I was looking at the Kentucky Derby. He's like, why the long face? <laughs> now, we say that every teeth. time we talk about Sarah Jessica Parker. Come on. Now, now with Hillary Swank, it's not so much a long face. It's, it's teeth. those it's, teeth. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> but see, I've always thought that, you know. <laughs> The yeah. media, the media's jumped on that goddamn bandwagon. Yeah. I mean, I mean, she, I mean she's, it is like like Julia Roberts had sex with a horse. But uh, the, the thing is, I didn't see Valentine's Day, so I don't have that to compare it to. I just look at a movie that's got too many characters, too many storylines. None of them are, are getting fleshed out. I'm like, you know what? This whole that Zac Efron story with uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer. That actually could have been a, a, a sweet indie movie had that been taken by itself. You know what? That, that could actually could not have even been in this movie. Yeah, yeah, it could. There's have. a lot of. There's, there's a lot, lot of. Yeah, you know, exactly. Ka- Captain Heigl. We didn't even talk about her. Her story with, with Did Bon Jovi. You say Captain Heigl? No, Catherine. Oh, Catherine. Okay. Catherine. Okay. Captain yeah, Heigl. Heigl. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that that whole thing. That's like this is a non-problem that has a non-resolution. I don't, I don't even get why this is, why this is being dragged <laughs> out. Didn't. Why are we even seeing this? Other than an excuse to get Sofia Vergara in there ever so often. Uh, you know what? I mean, you don't have to see this movie. You could just drink a bottle of NyQuil and fall asleep in front of Nick at night and all these stories will, will come to you in your dreams. <laughs> yeah. It'll be like you saw it. Now, the only thing that Normally, I would get this a fuck you, but I didn't get mad. And the fact is, you know what? There's a point when I thought about a movie, Contagion, where too many characters, too many plots. Mm -hmm. And that movie did all that shit and didn't resolve hardly any of them. And it was frustrating, completely frustrating. Now, this, to its credit, it does come to an ending with just about every one of these stories. They're all mediocre and plain, and you're just like, all right, whatever. But it did tie it off at the end. So for me, it just... It ends up being a, a some old bullshit. Uh, you know, I, I saw Valentine's Day, and I'm pretty sure I gave it a fuck you. I mean, I really hated that movie, and well, you well, I should have. It's like a similar type structure, except, like I said, they're unbalanced. Some of the stories, you're like, why would, did you even bother having this? Any? Oh, so you could get that celebrity. You know, and that was it. It was so obvious. Plus, a lot of those stories, those people were just plain hateful. You were like, wow, I can't stand these characters, and I think they're all acting like assholes. I didn't have that problem here, and I gotta give this movie a little bit of credit at least for doing that. Of going, wow, I didn't actually as fake and imaginary as almost everyone in this film is, and like just shallow. I didn't really openly dislike any of them. It was hard to because uh, there wasn't enough material to <laughs> give and date them on. I, I don't know. In a weird sort of way, I also like when people try and express positivity about New Year's Eve in some way. And I thought that it was really trying hard to give that attitude of like, look, everybody deserves a second chance. Let's, you know, let's look at the New Year as a fresh start. I like that type of sentiment. 
But that being said, it got pretty cloying pretty fast. (laughs) There are little parts that are here and there made me laugh, but so much of it just made me groan. It took everything that was in me to not sit there through the whole movie going, (sighs) you have no idea. I had to choke that down so many times I got acid reflux. (laughs) Give give you a Zantac. (laughs) Next time I'll know to bring the Tums with me. Uh, Yeah, this is not a good movie. It really isn't. There's so many things I could point out. There's continuity errors all throughout it. This is like really obviously something big that happened that they didn't even bother to fix where, I don't know if you noticed in, what's his name, Josh? Dumel. Dumel, Dumel's story. Like he gets on on this RV with his family and for some reason his cell phone is in a jar of rice for the whole next 10 minutes of his sequence. Like prominently, right in the middle of the scene. And you're like, don't you think you might want to mention why his cell phone's in that? That probably was rice? in the movie and got cut out. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. But it was like, just, wow, just like that's De Niro just, being alive. That's just sloppy. <laughs> yeah. That's just sloppy editing, if you ask me. It's like shit that was in there. Now we have to keep that in the movie. Yeah. And there's lots of stuff like that. There's little bits where, like, there's a thing where a woman's holding a dog, and it, every time it flashes back and forth, the more she's holding the dog in a totally different position. Oh, that dog oh. in a different position. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, was, it, was, it was a squirmy dog. Like, yeah, I know. It had been pretty goddamn. Squirmy. There was a point where she was yeah. a parrot, and that dog was on her shoulder. <laughs> I mean, she was a pirate. That dog was in her shoulder. Man, guys, it's Gary. It's Gary Marshall. He's old. Okay, right. you guys must play Sly Fox in the uh, newspaper strips a lot. <laughs> like, spot the difference. Yeah, there's just. I wish I could like this a little bit more because, like I said, it's inoffensive. But at the same time, just as a, a, a someone who reviews films, I have to go. You just didn't put much work into this. This was a half-assed effort at best, and I'm not going to reward him for it. It's a some old bullshit. <laughs> yeah, you had me on pins and needles. I'm like, yeah. which way is he going? No, <laughs> Add, do the math on that one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, it's some, some old bullshit for me, uh, and, and that's and that's because yeah, it, it's a it's a guy who got all his friends together and say, like, hey, let's fuck around and make a movie about New Year's, and you guys can ad lib, do your comedy if you got it in you, and I'll just film the fuck out of it, and later on we'll throw it together in the editing room. We'll have fucking. Rich over here, put it together. And, 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 and Adam Sandler said, "Call my lawyer." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's all. And that's all I got. I didn't really care about a single person besides De Niro. Only, only, only because I was waiting for him to fucking come back as a zombie De Niro or something at the end. Because I'm like, I saw in the trail this guy look fucking like a million bucks hanging out on a rooftop, you know, <laughs> hanging out with Ludacris waiting for them to put turn on the bat signal. But uh, Boy, I mean, the glass I, but, is always half full for you. Co-host. Yeah, but I was, I was just like, okay, well. I don't care. I don't care. At the end of it all, I just didn't care. It was. It's part of a Hallmark trilogy, I'm sure. I don't know what else they're going to fucking, you know. Arbor I don't know Day. What, I was, I was yeah, just yeah, thinking that. You yeah, took it right out. I was waiting for yeah. the moment and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Arbor Day. You go ahead. Yeah, there you go. So you can't of, see Memorial Day because yeah. Spielberg owns that. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's, <laughs> part, it's part of the, the Hallmark trilogy. You can you can pick up a Hallmark card and get just about as much out of that card as you can this movie. Yeah, next so, movie's going to be a bunch I, of celebrities planting trees. And, that, and that's all it is. Or, or, or fucking celebrity nerd nursing home which that would be hilarious to see god damn michelle pfeiffer i don't know what kind of photoshop you were using on those pictures but i hate you for it because i, I was one of those pers- i was one of those people who were like oh, she looks great for that age and then somebody showed a picture like two days later and it looked like the fucking curse of the mummy happened to her or something i don't know what happened but christ i feel bad you know hey i understand that's what happens when you get old yeah, but shit you know uh, betty page is gone for a reason she never appeared in pictures after she was like 34 reason and you know i felt sad looking at her because i was like wow gary marshall did you really have to make her look like shit i mean she her eyes are bloodshot yeah she looked like somebody threw her a fucking down the stairs and then she rolled into the dryer and fucking came out confused what she was doing but i think wow. that's what gary marshall did because i don't think michelle pfeiffer is a bad looking woman i think no, she's supposed, she, i think she's supposed to look happy Haggard in this, I, right? But they but made her look haggard, too fucking but, haggard. And there yeah. is, oh, oh yeah. no! <laughs> and there is Gary Marshall, like looking down some steps and say, "Hey, what's that?" And then kicking her down. <laughs> she looked like that. She looked like that fucking old chick with the tits dragging on the ground from uh, Dark Crystal. I mean, she, yeah, she, she looked bad. Her hair was crazy. She looked better in Stardust when she was a witch who was turning old. Oh, yeah. stop! Yeah. Leave that woman alone. That is true. Yeah. Poor lady, but yeah, Damn. sorry, it's some bullshit. Come on, y'all. I'm still trying to get there. And for this one magical night, it's about getting another chance to do more, to give more, to love more. Because that's what New Year's is all about. That and a good party. Nothing beats 
Eve.